Hi guys, it is an absolutely <coughs> spectacularly gorgeous. We're talking a seriously over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of everything here on the, this unbelievably beautiful. It is a Thursday afternoon. It is September. 19th, is it 18th or 19th, 2024, somewhere in there. So I am uh, back up here at Blue Dragon after this nasty little bitch. Uh, she checked in here for three nights last night. She stayed 30 minutes, ran screaming into the night that she felt unsafe, unsafe for spending the night at Blue Dragon Tiny House because it was so filthy. It is so filthy and disgusting here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. She could not spend one night here. So anyway, I'm glad that nasty little bitch is out of here. And so I can uh, risk my life by uh, spending the night. So now that I've picked up the dead hermit thrush and that smashed into the window that that little bitch managed to close in the 20 minutes she was here. I can finally get to today's chronicle of the collapse and we're just going to get <clears throat> some straight up doomer porn. You know, I used to do regular coverage over how fucked the Amazon rainforest is. You know, when I did my Manga Bay roundups every week until I realized after eight years of the most important chronicle of the collapse that I did every week, I understood that I was talking to myself. So as you notice, I do not mention mangabay.com, uh, one of the most important chroniclers of the collapse on the planet because nobody wants to hear it. So uh, I got tired of talking to myself. But this other group, which I uh, am also subscribed to, is this group called Amazon Watch. Now, Amazon Watch is this bunch of uh, mostly little limp dick lefties uh, suffering, uh, you know, the, the, the biggest victims of the myth of the noble savage. Uh, so 95% of what they talk about in Amazon Watch is, uh, you, you know, how the noble savages, uh, those innocent noble savages uh, are uh, getting all the ways they're getting their asses kicked down in the Amazon rainforest. But I'm glad to say they veered off from that and looked at a little bit bigger picture this week. And this is some straight ahead uh, doomer porn maybe a little weak attempt at hopium at the end of it. Take it away, Amazon Watch, and tell us what is going on in the Amazon rainforest. You know, since that Save the Planet President Lula, uh, remember Bozo Nero? We finally got rid of that fucker, and uh, we put in that little lefty Lula pledging to save the Amazon rainforest. So let's get a progress report on how Lula is saving the Amazon rainforest and the rest of the planet in the process. Take it away, Amazon Watch. From crisis to catastrophe, the man-made inferno devouring the Amazon. The Amazon's crippling drought and explosive fires are the result of human-induced climate change and more often 
the results of a human-induced match with drastic implications for us all. Whether or not you're a noble savage, you are having some drastic implications. All right. Today's Amazon fire emergency, like the climate crisis exacerbating it, is entirely man-made. What has become an annual nightmare for the forest and its people can only be solved by ending fossil fuels, ain't going to happen, guaranteeing the permanent protection of indigenous, there are no indigenous people in the Amazon, and traditional lands ain't going to happen, and barring the further expansion of industrial development and organized crime into the rainforest. Ain't going to happen. You might have figured out by now that I was going to include this story in tomorrow's Ain't Gonna Happen Roundup, but uh, I thought uh, we would give it its own rant. Okay, Brazil's Bozo Nero regime fanned the flames, but the expanding destruction of the rainforest will continue each year until there is a collective effort to stop it. Ain't gonna happen. Animal agriculture, land grabbing, devastation from quote, legal, legal and illegal mining, like there's any difference between legal and illegal mining, fossil fuel extraction, and industrial development across the biome are driving the worst fires in years, and the Amazon can not withstand this assault. Recall that as vast swaths of the Brazilian Amazon were incinerated in 2019, the world took notice in an unprecedented show of alarm and solidarity, demanding that the Bozo Nero government take swift and decisive action to extinguish the flames. Yes, we all saw how well that worked out five years ago. Yet, when the smoke cleared, its root causes indigenous land invasions. So I, at first what I read uh, when I saw indigenous land invasions, I thought they were talking correctly uh, about humans invading uh, parts of the Amazon rainforest where there were no humans. But then I, and then I thought, oh yeah, what site are you on? They're talking about, you, you know, uh, all of these uh, various uh, villains invading the land that was invaded by the non-indigenous noble savages how many thousands of years ago. Okay, its root causes indigenous land invasions, violence against environmental and human rights defenders, and widespread ecological destruction continued unabated. So in 2022, the planet-saving President Lula narrowly defeated Bozo Nero. His promises to defend the rainforest breathe new heaven, breathe new heaven, Breathe new, breathe new into the movement to avert the Amazon's catastrophic tipping point. While deforestation 
you know, the, the actual, you know, knocking down of trees by uh, chainsaws and bulldozers, while deforestation has increasingly been contained under Lula's administration, 2024 has witnessed the second consecutive year of historic Amazon drought and the highest number of fires in 20 years. Meanwhile, fires are also raging in Brazil's Cerrado, Pantanal, and Atlantic biomes, with 60% of the country now covered in toxic smoke, while massive blazes engulfed forests in neighboring Peru and Bolivia. 16 of the countries uh, oh, in Peru, 16 of the country's 25 regions have been affected by fires, with 70% of these blazes occurring in the Peruvian Amazon, affecting more than 87 indigenous territories. In Bolivia, the government reports that 4 million hectares otherwise known as 10 million acres, have been impacted by the flames you know, this year, which have reached 45 of the 58 indigenous territories spanning the Amazon, the Chicania, and the Chaco biomes. As South America experiences an unprecedented number of fires, Brazil alone accounts for 76% of the continent's hotspots with more than 5,000 outbreaks in a single day. In just three Amazonian states, fire has already consumed 5.4 million hectares, so that's 12 and a, about 15 million acres uh, have been incinerated this year uh, just in three uh, Amazon states in Brazil. As a result, rather than performing its critical function of absorbing carbon dioxide, the worst impacted region of the Brazilian Amazon became the largest emitter of CO2 in the world. And then they have links to where they're sourcing all of this information. Uh, the destruction also breaks with the previous cycle of Amazon fires where affected forests were generally already degraded by selective, by selective logging mm -hmm, prior to being torched for cattle ranching and other purposes. Fires in Brazil's old growth forests grew 132% last month compared to 2023, making these critically preserved ecosystems one-third of the area affected. Alarmingly, fires on Brazil's indigenous lands sparked by 39 percent between 2023 and 24. These fires accounted for 24% of all Amazon blazes so far this year, reducing more than 1.3 million hectares. We're going to call that three and a half million acres to ashes as Brazil's 
indigenous territories nominally nominally benefit benefit from rigorous federal protection yes their destruction by organized criminal networks with impunity imposes a growing menace in the region while brazilian authorities have claimed that the bulk of this year's fires are driven by El Nino and unprecedented, there's that word again, climate change driven drought, Environmental Minister Marina Silva indicated that arson, can you say that fire was started with a match? That arson is another factor. With the vast majority of blazes consuming forest adjacent to agriculture, agricultural areas and Brazil's agribusiness sector ceaselessly seizing more and more land to expand cattle ranching and monocrops, mainly talking soybeans is the big one, it is clear this association is more than a coincidence, do you think so? Beleaguered firefighters are again scrambling to contain the infernos, but specialists, specialists warn the fires will build, will burn until much anticipated, but entirely uncertain rains return in October. As this crisis unfolds, many have asked if deforestation is down, what is driving such unparalleled destruction? One answer to this question might be found in what President Lula told the press when touring drought-stricken riverbanks in Amazonia. Quote, We take the need to, com to combat drought, deforestation, and fires very seriously. He said, We need to focus on adaptation and preparedness for these phenomena. Close quote. Do you think so, Lula? His statements appear rational until heard alongside his decision, his decisive support that very same day for the paving of the problematic BR319 road that cuts directly through some of Brazil's best preserved rainforest threatening to unleash untold destruction and deepen the region's crisis. We cannot, quote, take deforestation seriously and, quote, focus on adaptation and preparedness, close quote, while simultaneously continuing the same development model that created today's emergency. Gee, the new boss looking a hell of a lot like the old boss. What a surprise. One commonality between Brazil and neighboring countries suffering from a scourge of drought and fires is a propensity to treat the symptoms, not the illness. When fires consume vast forest, incinerating ecosystems, and choking the air for millions, they, you know, meaning the fires, must be fought. However, the cure to the crisis starts with prevention. Ain't gonna happen. Vol voluntary fire brigades 
are risking their lives across the Amazon to protect the forest, its animals, and the planet's biodiversity for the benefit of all humanity. Yet, it is the responsibility of the Amazonian government to create the conditions to combat the fires and protect the Amazon and its peoples. In Brazil, the Lula government must fulfill its promises of respecting indigenous rights and urgently carry out the demarcation of indigenous lands. This is not only because indigenous land titling is its constitutional duty, but also because it sends a much needed signal to destructive actors from the country's agribusiness sector to the extractive industries to its criminal networks that the Brazilian federal government seeks to prioritize governance and the well-being of the Amazon's best stewards in an increasingly lawless region. Yep, 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 yep. Let's head over to Peru and Bolivia now. In Peru, the growing, pa the growing power of industrial and illicit agribusiness such as palm oil, illegal logging, gold mining, and drug trafficking are driving a new wave of deforestation and an explosion in Amazon fires never registered in the country's history. They must be prevented by repealing anti-forest laws and containing the expansion of illegal economies. And these steps must be concurrent with the recognition and protection of indigenous land and communities from rising levels of violence in Peru. Okay, over to Bolivia. In Bolivia, the political mandates of the country's incendiary laws, I love that term, which consider forests to be, quote, idle land, idle land awaiting conversion to agro-industrial purposes must be reevaluated in light of the environmental crisis these policies are provoking. One urgent step would be to ban the expansion of industrial agriculture into new areas and firmly regulate agribusiness and land zoning practices in Bolivia. Yes. The current measures needed to contain today's Amazon emergency are contingent on the international community, specifically in countries with strong political and economic ties to Amazonian nations. The concern and urgency demonstrated during the 2019 fires must again drive global public opinion and diplomatic and economic responses from authorities. The solutions, the solutions for a spiraling Amazon crisis are manifold, but no other actions will be effective without prioritizing protecting indigenous territories. Yes, from that point, we must continue to develop an entirely new vision for the biome and its peoples that thoroughly rejects the colonial extractive model that has brought the life-giving rainforest to a disastrous tipping point 
imperiling our collective future. To avert the disaster, the Amazon must be considered a no-go zone for all new extraction and the expansion of the destructive monoculture and pasture into forest and protected areas must be stopped. Meanwhile, its indigenous peoples must gain definitive authority over their ancestral lands. Immediate action is needed and longer term solutions must be supported. Amazon Watch is calling on the international community, local governments, and civil society to unite to not only put out the fires, but end their root cause and hold accountable those responsible for the destruction of the forest we depend upon for humanity's survival. Uh, la, the fuck, la. Yes, little dog, you seem awful concerned about the Amazon rainforest burning to the ground. He's about, I'm concerned about that mousy in the wall. There's a mousy in that wall, and I need to go get that mousy like that. Oh, Jesus. Why do I do this, guys? <laughs> you know, really, why, why the fuck do I do this? Anyway, I'm going to wrap up today's Chronicle of the Collapse because I have to go scrub a, uh, no doubt, tropical hardwood uh, butcher block knife holder. This uh, woman who uh, went screaming in terror out of Blue Dragon saying she felt unsafe was uh, claiming that my probably tropical hardwood knife holder from Walmart uh, had dust on it and these little, uh, no doubt, tropical hardwood coffee and sugar and creamer containers that the little tropical hardwood spoons were dirty. So we had a tropical hardwood Walmart knife holder with dust on it and some tropical hardwood uh, little spoons were dirty and she was out of here. This beautiful piece of wood is uh, red cedar from uh, the great state of Florida. Uh, get out there and smell the flowers while you still can through the smoke of the burning planet. As the leaves fall down we got two more days of the summer of 2024 between before the fall of 2024 arrives on Sunday. Bye guys.